We are live. I don't get to hit our gong enough, so this is a good time for me to hit the gong. So we'll wait for a minute just to to kind of get closer to well, it's almost seven o'clock. Um, I think everything's rolling. Let me check one last thing. Looks good. Okay. So, hi, my name is Dave Butler. Uh, I'm the owner and, and clinic director of Align Therapy in Lehigh, Utah. We specialize in scoliosis and spinal deformities. Um, I'll also introduce Dawson in a little bit. Dawson's my son, and he's helping me with <laughs> the tech side of things. He, um, he's shaking his head that he doesn't want to be, be part of this, but I'm going to need his help for something. So, uh, so I'll introduce him, but we're glad you're here. Glad you're joining us live. Uh, for all those on, on YouTube that are joining us live, we appreciate that. And hopefully you get something out of this. Hopefully this is helpful and hopefully this uh, helps you understand scoliosis a little bit more. Helps you to uh, understand how to best treat your scoliosis. Um, I, a little bit of history on me. I've been a scoliosis specialist for about eight years. I've been a physical therapist for 15 years no, 16 years, and so I specialized in orthopedics before I specialized in scoliosis. And uh, the last eight years has been really cool because I've been able to really dive deep into scoliosis and spinal deformities, and, and I, I really enjoy it. I tell my patients that I'm kind of a scoliosis nerd, and Dawson would probably agree with that, that, well, generally I'm a nerd, but scoliosis-wise, I'm definitely a nerd. I really enjoy being able to help people with scoliosis. So that's about me. I opened the, this clinic, Align Therapy, uh, in 2015. So we've been open now for eight years. And we have three therapists and we focus on scoliosis and spine and some orthopedics. And so that's kind of what makes me, um, it ma makes me excited about physical therapy is digging deep into something that's complex and challenging. And so that's, yeah, a little bit about me and my background. Why should you listen to me? That's, that's a, big, uh, a big thing. Why should you listen to me as a scoliosis specialist, self-proclaimed? Uh, I think the biggest reason is that I have studied a lot about scoliosis. I'm certified in the Schroth Method. I went through the Barcelona Scoliosis Physical Therapy School. Uh, there are first level and second level courses. Uh, I'm certified in the C's approach, the scientific exercise approach to scoliosis as well. And I've been seeing this a long time. I associate with surgeons, with pediatricians, with uh, orthotists, and I feel like we have a good handle on how to treat scoliosis here in Utah uh, in, in my clinic. And I, I hope to be able to reach more people through, um, through online and through uh, just in, in our community here. So hopefully this is helpful. Dawson says we have a question. No, nobody wants them. What? They're not busy. Okay. So, <laughs> didn't really need to know that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay. So we're going to go through, and I want to talk about a few, a few different things. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is something that I've seen recently in scoliosis. We have... Um, in scoliosis, we have a lot of kids that have a lot of, of uh, fear surrounding scoliosis and a lot of um, self-image issues because their self-image issues uh, relates to how they look and how their, their spine looks. And so with that, I wanted to kind of bring up the topic of support, the, the topic of how, how do we support the teenagers and the kids with scoliosis because a lot of times like I'll see them in the office and I'll be evaluating them and we won't really uh, 
we don't really know how much they're struggling. And I usually get that from their parents. I usually get that from, uh, you know, from some, some other ways that I can tell that someone's struggling. But a lot of times they don't, they don't tell me specifically that they're struggling. And they, don't, um, and they don't talk to a lot of people about it. So recently I've had a couple of patients who have had uh, really a hard time with the diagnosis of scoliosis. So if that's you, if that's uh, consistent with what you have going on, um, and you're concerned about how you look, you're concerned about uh, whether people can see a brace that you have on and things like that, um, then there are support groups that you can, you can talk to. I don't mean a support group where you sit down and you say, hi, my name is Dave and I have scoliosis, and you sit in a circle. It's uh, support groups online, the Curvy Girls support group. Uh, that's a great one. So I'm going to write here the Curvy Girls is a great support group that we've associated with for a little while and um, that's one that I think would be would be great to to contact if you're a teenage girl dealing with scoliosis. If you're a teenage boy dealing with scoliosis usually they don't have as many issues um, with body image and things like that but that's not always true so uh, you can't really attend a curvy girls meeting but there are plenty of online support groups for that. So Get support, talk to people who, uh, who are dealing with the same thing that you're dealing with. And really that's, that's a way to, to be able to really feel like you're not alone in this. Let me grab one little pamphlet. So here, here's a pamphlet that we'll give out to those kids that are braced. It's called Scoliosis, and it's a, it's a group where they can put you in contact with other other kids who are also braced. Um, this is a great group and bracing specifically is pretty challenging for for kids with scoliosis and if you can talk to someone who's dealing with the same thing. I mean talking to me I may have heard a lot over the last eight years about this but talking to me doesn't help as much as talking to someone that that uh, that is dealing with it as well. So feel free to, to look that up. Uh, let's see if there's a, a website here. Well, there's a blog. I don't know exactly what, I forget what the website is. Oh, Bracing for Scoliosis, uh, Bracing for Scoliosis us.org. So there's some information on that if you can see that. Can we see that, Doc? Oh, yeah, we have a delay. So there's that. So that, that's good. Get some support. Uh, support your kids mentally as well as physically. You know, not just bracing, but also supporting their mental health as well. Um, so I also wanted to talk about a multidisciplinary approach for scoliosis. So multidisciplinary, what that means is that we have multiple disciplines that are following the, the child with scoliosis or the adult with scoliosis. So I wanted to talk about each member of the multidisciplinary team. So this, this is a, a little bit less about what you can do specifically for scoliosis and more how to get the best um, treatment for scoliosis um, and make sure members of the team are there to help you. So usually, a lot of times, the, uh, the scoliosis is caught by a pediatrician. So pediatrician... Um, Pediatrician is kind of one uh, that's, that's important. Usually that's where it's caught. If kids are doing uh, yearly well checks, then pediatrician is usually who's going to be catching that. Sometimes it's dance teachers. Sometimes it's in the schools. It can be all kinds, but this is where we see the, the most kids that are caught. So if you're bending forward in the pediatrician office and he's looking at your back, that's a scoliosis check. And he's a, an important member of the multidisciplinary team. The next one, I'm a little biased towards this one, uh, physical therapist. So a little, a little uh, disclaimer for that. That physical therapist needs to be trained in PSSE or some, some school of training for scoliosis like the Schroth method or the C's approach or 
the lion method or something, something that is specific to the scoliosis, uh, to scoliosis, because if it's not specific to scoliosis, they're kind of guessing at what to do. Sorry, other PTs out there that might be watching this, but unless you're trained specifically in it, the research doesn't support that what you're doing is actually supporting the, the curve. So that's uh, another member of the multidisciplinary team. Uh, another one is an orthotist. So a lot of kids ask me, what's an orthotist? An orthotist is uh, the one who makes the brace. So if you are braced, which is usually curves over 25 degrees, um, if you're over 25 degrees, an orthotist will be helping make the brace, fit the brace, keep the brace fitting well so that you have a good result in, in the brace. Uh, it's not great to have a brace that doesn't fit well or doesn't correct, then it's just kind of torture, so the orthotist is a, a key component of that. Then we have an orthopedic surgeon. So an orthopedic surgeon that specializes in scoliosis and spinal deformities. And they're, they're a crucial part of the multidisciplinary team as well. Um, really, as far as the disciplines or the professionals that should be on your team, these are the basic ones. Um, there are other, other uh, professions that could be part of your multidisciplinary team as well, but these are the, the main four. Uh, you don't, I don't feel like seeing a surgeon is really indicated until it gets to the point where a surgeon needs to follow that. But, or, or an orthotist, if you're less than 25 degrees, the orthotist doesn't need to be part of your team. But if you have scoliosis and it's a measurable curve, the pediatrician can, can monitor that and follow that. And a physical therapist trained in PSSE can help you determine whether you need more significant treatment. I am a little biased, and I may say something that's a little controversial here, but I feel like for curves that are under probably 30 degrees, a physical therapist who focuses on PSSE is probably uniquely skilled to follow that because we see people more frequently, we can help them do their exercises, and we can communicate with the pediatrician so that we can get that information back and forth and then if it gets to the point where an orthotist is needed we can work with that and then if it's if it's needed to see a surgeon then uh, then we can kick it to that as well so personal opinion I feel like a physical therapist that's specialized in PSSE uh, my preference is the Schroth method um, is a great way to to manage this and a great kind of a not not really a gatekeeper but um, the one that can kind of coordinate the multidisciplinary team. So if you don't have a team that is um, watching your scoliosis, following your scoliosis, helping you to get the best result, uh, create a team. You know, your pediatrician may not know the other members of the team. Get, get a team together and you may have to push for that a little bit. So that's a little plug on the multidisciplinary team. So Dawson, any questions yet? Okay. So one of the things in the description that I mentioned was that I was going to talk about three things you can do to improve your posture and reduce pain right now uh, to help reduce pain, improve posture if you have scoliosis to, to kind of stabilize that curve. I'm not going to teach Schroth method exercises here because uh, everyone has a different curve and I don't want to have someone doing a, an exercise that's not correct. So we're going to go over three simple things that you can look at. So the first thing is I have a little device that I've been playing around with a few different patients with. It's called the Upright Go. Um, I used to not really like the Upright Go. I thought it was a little gimmicky, but I, th I think it's come a long way in the last couple of years. The Upright Go is a little wearable tech device that you can put you, this sticky stuff on the back, sticks to your back really easily and it's reusable and you stick it to your upper back right here in the middle and you turn it on and then it has an app associated with it and it will vibrate when you get out of good posture so it's a little more related to sitting but it can be standing as well but if you start to slouch when you're sitting 
um, not unlike Dawson's doing right now. Um, then it starts to vibrate and it gives you some feedback that that's happening. If it starts to vibrate, you correct your posture and it stops vibrating. So, which is uh, the whole goal of that. Um, the thing that I really like about it though, you can turn off the setting where it vibrates. So you can track your posture rather than having it remind you of your posture. So uh, I think it'd be really cool if I had a kid with kyphosis specifically with this or just posture where they're forward to stick this on their back and um, and then track on an app on, on their app to see how much they're sitting in good posture and if they are doing really well great if there's some work to be done then you can turn on the vibrate function and, and remind them so it's just a little guy and I think technology a lot of times is the problem with posture and and I think with this little device it becomes some of the solution so the thing I like, one thing I really like about it is it doesn't rely on external things to keep you in a good posture. So it, it allows you to get out of good posture and then you use your muscles to get back in good posture. I would prefer this over the straps that we see on the internet where they're pulling you back and holding you in that position. Because if, if that's pulling you back and keeping you in that position, then it's not, um, it's not the muscles having to do it. So. I think there's a place for those, but it's not as often as something like this would be helpful. So that's the Upright Go 2. I put a, a link to the Upright Go 2 in, uh, in the description for this video. So go ahead and look down there and there's a link to Amazon where uh, you can get an Upright Go 2. They're really not that expensive and they're really helpful and they last a while. So that's the Upright Go 2. Um, KT tape is something that you can use to help improve posture and reduce pain. So I am going to have Dawson come up here and we're going to, we're going to demonstrate this. So we, we are, come here. <laughs> he, he's not a huge fan of this, but that's okay. I, this is how he earns his room and board. So here we go. Dawson turn this way. This is Dawson. He's almost as tall as me, but not quite. So KT tape I'll use to reduce pain specifically in the thoracic spine um, by taking the KT tape and, and putting two strips down the sides of the spine. I'll put a link to this in the description for a video that I did specifically on this with scoliosis. Um, you rip the end, the backing of the end, and you lay it down, and then you pull tension out and just lay it along the spine, and then you do that on both sides. But the key is you don't really want the... So slouch, slouch. You don't want them in this position when you put it on. I want it put on when they're s sitting up straight. And then you put the KT tape on. And then when they go to slouch, it tugs on them a little bit. And it reminds them to sit up straighter. So K KT tape is also helpful to support the muscles along the spine. So that, that's an easy way. There's a link to the KT tape um, on Amazon as well. Thanks, Doss. And uh, KT tape is relatively easy. Just don't leave it on longer than three or four days because it starts to irritate the skin. So KT tape Pro is what you're looking for because it, it holds its elasticity a little bit better. The, there is KT tape that's cotton. I don't usually like that one as much. So, so that's something you can do, something that's, that's relatively easy. The third thing is looking at your ergonomics. So this is a little harder to demonstrate. I think I'll do another video based on ergonomics, but you can find ergonomic videos everywhere. But making sure that your ergonomics are set up in a way that's not encouraging bad posture. So what I mean by that is if your ergonomics or your work setup or your computer setup or your gaming setup is encouraging you to go forward like this, you are overloading those muscles on the back and they're not going to be happy and you get tighter in the front. So if your ergonomics allow you to pull out of that and stay out of that while you work and while you game or as you do whatever you're doing, then we reduce the strain on the muscles. So that's kind of a harder one to demonstrate specific things, but a good rule of thumb is if you're sitting. So if I was sitting, I want my hips to be at about 90 degrees and I want my elbows to be at about 90 degrees 
if I'm on a computer so that I'm not reaching and coming forward and so that my body can stay up straight. Our spine should be supporting the weight of the body. We shouldn't be slouching into whatever surface that we're on. So those three things. We've got the upright go to, which I, I think is, is good and I'm excited to see what other tech devices come out. Uh, number two is the KT tape along the paraspinals or the sides of the spine. And then the third one is look at your ergonomics, make sure that you're sitting upright. You don't have to be like straight up and down all the time, but make sure your sitting position isn't encouraging that forward position. So hopefully those help. Um, I'd love to have you put comments in the, the comments and let me know how those go. Or if you have any specific questions on that, I'd be happy to do that. But I do think we'll do another video specific to ergonomics. And we may even do one specific to ergonomics with scoliosis patients. That becomes a little, little more complex because then we have to deal with what types of curves uh, those are. So that's good. Okay, Doss, just a quick check on that. No questions still? All right. No questions today. This is, this is odd. Before we had a lot of questions, hopefully this is actually going live, Doss. So, <laughs> um, or maybe everyone's gone tonight. I don't know. But uh, so one other thing I wanted to talk about, um, I wanted to talk about an article that I did a little video review for that uh, talked about whether chiropractic is helpful for affecting the curve in scoliosis. Kind of a, a controversial topic. A lot of my patients who have scoliosis, they ask me that question. Would chiropractic be beneficial for this? <clears throat> now a little, a little disclaimer, I do um, manipulate the spine or mobilize the spine at a, at a high level with some of my patients to reduce pain or increase mobility. But the research article that I'm talking about showed that there is no evidence to support the use of spinal manipulation to affect the scoliosis curve progression or magnitude. Um, there's just not enough studies and the studies that were done were biased and weren't very good quality. And so really right now, the consensus is that there's not enough evidence to support that. Now, does that mean that you can't go to a chiropractor and, and get your back adjusted if you have scoliosis? No, that's not what that means. It just means if your purpose in going to a chiropractor to get your back adjusted is to reduce the curve and reduce the, the progression of the curve, there's no real evidence to support that. So um, I think that's important. I've, I've heard, and not every chiropractor is like this, um, I've heard some claim that they can, they can fix the curve or they can reduce the curve significantly. Uh, I would, if you're going to a chiropractor or seeking someone out and they're telling you that, I'd be very wary of someone who says that. Uh, there's just no evidence to support that. And until we get the evidence, I mean, there may, may be case studies where they're like, oh, look what happened with this or look what happened with that. But there's no evidence with a controlled randomized trial that supports um, that chiropractic affects the progression of the curve. So there are chiropractic techniques, um, methods like the clear method that utilize some of the Italian method, the C's approach, the scoliosis, the scientific exercise approach to scoliosis. Um, so they're incorporating some of this PSSE, but unless something like that is incorporated, uh, I mean, we can't affect the curve. So let me describe a little bit why. So if we have a, a scoliosis curve, if we zoom in and we look at a couple of vertebrae, let me go a little closer here. So normally, so we have the, the vertebrae like this, so they're tipped and they're curving. So a normal spine, you know, everything's stacked on top of each other. Here on the, the ends of the vertebrae, this is a pretty simplistic view, but uh, let, me, let me show you where I'm going. On the ends of the vertebrae are the growth plates. So um, they're called vertebral end plates. And as you grow, this, the vertebral body grows from those end plates. In a normal spine, the pressure that's coming down from above is equal on those growth plates, and the growth plate grows evenly and equally. 
in a scoliosis spine, we have this kind of a wedge gap in there. So when that's loaded, we get more pressure on the convex, uh, sorry, the concave side of the curve. So that growth plate, those growth plates aren't going to grow as much, but we have less pressure on the convex side of the curve. So we get more bone growth. So if we get more bone growth, we get more wedging of the vertebrae. And more wedging of the vertebrae creates more curve and that progresses. So what we need, what bracing does and physical therapy with PSSE does, is it helps to use the muscles to provide a force that controls where that curve is going, how far it's pushing this way. Basically, we're trying to open up this space so that that growth can happen normally. It's the same thing with VBT. VBT is vertebral body tethering. They're tethering this side so that that side can grow. We have to have that force input into the system uh, over time to get that, that bone growth to change. If we don't have that input, then it doesn't change. So if we're thinking about passive things like manipulating the spine or massage or things like that, it may have a temporary effect, but it's just gonna go back into this scenario where it's growing in the curve. Um, passive things, the only passive thing that I see really help as much is bracing. And in a way that's not really a passive thing, it's very active. You're actively wearing a brace and you're actively um, trying to, to move the spine. So I know in our society we want, we want the quick and easy, we want the pill, we want to, to have something that is, is easy for us to do. You go and get manipulated by a, a chiropractor or adjusted and you're fixed. You know, there's not a whole lot of effort for that. Compare that to in physical therapy, we require a lot out of our patients. We require them to do a lot of uh, exercise, a lot of consistent things at home, a lot of those things. Um, and it's not, it's not passive by any means. The orthotist wearing a brace isn't passive. Bracing kind of sucks, and and it takes work. Uh, surgery, you know, we're, this isn't to talk about surgery, but surgery is not, I guess it is kind of a passive thing, but there's a lot of work afterwards and before that as well. So if we're trying to stop this from happening, that progression, we need something more active and more, and more specific. So not to harp on chiropractic, I think there are a lot of things that chiropractic can be beneficial for, but scoliosis, unless it's for pain relief and it's helpful, um, it doesn't really affect scoliosis and, and stop the progression of the curve. So a little, little plug for that recent research study. There were a couple other ones, um, like one in 2017 that stated the same thing. So in the future, we'll kind of um, put up videos that talk more about research articles and things like that so that you can see what's effective and what isn't. So, um, so yeah, a little, little plug for that. But I think the biggest thing that I wanted to get across today, if we don't have any questions, which is unusual, Doss, that we don't have any questions. Um, the biggest thing I want to get across is the multidisciplinary approach and making sure that you're advocating for yourself and, or your child and uh, making sure that you are navigating this process. It may not be easy to navigate at first, but get with someone who deals with scoliosis a lot and, and they'll help guide you through that process. I know, I mean, this is out on YouTube, so there are people who don't have access to Schroth practitioners. There are people who really don't have any access to this. And right now we don't have a great solution for that, but I, I think as we see more Schroth providers in the world, I think, uh, will be able to get people closer to those that need it. But really, be an advocate for yourself and make sure that you're advocating for those things that, that you need. And sometimes you don't know what you need. It, I, it's pretty common, um, a specific scoliosis surgeon around here, he will not really not really talk about PSSE unless he's asked about it. And 
and even then it's not really something that he pushes. And I, and I think if we're truly looking at a multidisciplinary approach, we should be, that should be our first line of defense, is talking about Schroth exercises, talking about bracing up front, not going to surgery unless we need to go to surgery, and not doing the wait and see approach. The wait and see approach is outdated. We shouldn't be doing that anymore. So that, a plug for the multidisciplinary approach. Get to know your physical therapist who is specialized in Schroth, specialized in the C's approach. And, and get with them and they'll, they'll help you. They'll help you to, to know what to do. So I think that's all I wanted to cover in this workshop. Um, and I think, I guess, no questions last time. There's a lot of questions for this. But um, we'll do this again next month. We'll keep doing these each month so that we can get good information out there. And we'll leave this up so that, so that you can um, watch this later if you weren't able to attend live. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, so that you are alerted when we're doing live events. And when we do other videos, I try to make them helpful. Sometimes we do fun videos that are, you know, us skiing or getting injured or something like that. But um, I, think, I think those aren't as helpful, but they also provide a little bit of flavor to the channel. So subscribe and comment below, and I'd love to, to read your comments. I'll try to respond to those as we see them. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.